In the past videos, we've talked about Swift 5's generic result type. We've looked at generics with REST API endpoints. We've looked at Codable with JSON and generics. We've talked about why protocols do not allow generic parameters and a lot more. So this is not a Swift UI video tutorial. However, we are moving very, very close to using Swift UI for all of our videos. Okay, but before we do that, I want to have a masterclass in extensions, URL session, generics, and async and await. Because for as far as I'm concerned, I think this is going to wrap up our generics uh, videos um, before we actually tackle opaque types, all right, and box types. So let's now create a an extension to URL session, which is just a networking uh, tool basically in uh, in foundation if you haven't uh, used it already. Um, and async and await is being able to do something without completion handlers, which we haven't used it yet. However, you may have seen it in other videos I've made. But in this video, we're just going to use async and await again. And hopefully through demonstration, you will understand uh, what it does. So the aim of what we want to do is we want to take a, a uh, we want to make an extension to the URL uh, session first of all, okay? And so we just start doing this by saying uh, extension URL session. So next, the idea is that we want to be able to, to download uh, all of this JSON data from JSON placeholder uh, website, all right? And we want to be able to decode it, um, but we're only going to like decode like the name, the username and email. A lot of the other stuff we're, we're not going to worry about. Okay, so this is, the uh, the path, the URL that we need. So let's just uh, place this up here for reference at the moment. And so what we have with inside the URL session is we have URL session shared, and then we can say data task, et cetera, et cetera. So, but we wanna have a function uh, that basically just uh, says fetch all. And that means, hey, just give me all of the type that you're gonna have, okay? And we're gonna say, give me a URL, because we're gonna need this URL to do this requests so um, and and obviously we're going to pass in uh, this string with inside of the url here uh, which we'll do when we use it now this is going to be a uh, an async function all right um, because we want it to work on a background task the next thing is we want to use the generic result uh, type and uh, enum and we want to return an array of uh, type t and now we need to have an error, okay? So we're going to create a, a, a network error and we'll just uh, do this now and create our uh, enum, which is gonna be called network error. And that's gonna be then of string and it's gonna to conform to error. And we're just gonna say not found first of all, all right? And, uh, and let's just say decoding error and say, uh, and then say error as well. Uh, just to just to handle it nicely. So now it's moaning it doesn't understand what T is. Well, we know that we're going to have to uh, decode the JSON data into uh, model data. So th this T is going to have to be decodable. We could say that it's codable, but that's not the point here. Is we just want a function that decodes data, and uh, then we pass it back as the re result type. Because we haven't used uh, URL session uh, much in this video already. We, we've got a couple of functions that we can use. And uh, because we are already in URL session, we can just use the, the functions already. And here we've got uh, data for URL request or data for URL. Now, just for the sake of using the long version, we'll say uh, the request. So we'll make a request now here, and uh, we then just instantiate that then with a URL. The URL, the URL request is where you're going to store all of your headers and uh, everything like that. All right. So the URL is just the path, but the request is actually where you're going to say whether it's a post request or a get request uh, and so on. Okay. So it's it's moaning already that uh, call can throw. All right. So we're going to need to to uh, uh, try it, and we're going to to await it too. And as you can see here, we're going to need to wrap this in a do catch block as well, and then just contain that error, all right? 
Now we can see this is our first um, point where we're going to have an error. So we can say return here and failure, and we had this uh, this error one already. And we're not going to mess around with sending the error on for, uh, error on further. Um, okay, but the next thing we want to be able to do is uh, we have our we now have uh, the sorry we now have uh, the uh, data right, and we have the response. Whoops, the response here. Okay, and we now want to check that did we get a 200? It could have been that with the, the URL was the, the wrong URL. So we have to be able to check first of all before we start decoding uh, if this response is an HTTP response first of all. And it irritates me that they don't have a, an overload giving you an HTTP response. So we have to say response as and then make it an optional and say HTTP URL response. And once we get that, we're then going to say if the response and status code is equal to uh, 200, else then we're going to return and we're going to return a result. And then we're going to say, um, let's just say bad request here as well. All right. So we, we sent something wrong. You know, the URL was wrong or something was wrong. Now we know um, that the request was correct. We can now start uh, decoding uh, decoding the data. So we need a decoder. So here we say JSON decoder, and this is the bridge. The JSON decoder is a part of foundation, all right? And this is a bridge between um, our textual data or uh, that we have, as in JSON, and also then the model that we're going to use. Now, in this sense, we're going to use um, a user, which we haven't created yet. So let's just go ahead and create our user model. And this is going to have to be codable. And we're also going to use it identifiable. Um, it's just good practice to have an identifiable. And in our uh, in here, we see we have ID, name, username, and email. That's all we're going to create here. So uh, ID, uh, name, and then uh, username, and then email. That's all we're going to have here. And then uh, now, now we have our model. The identifiable is going to come uh, help to you in, in the future. Um, and this is also a an, has an associated type of ID. Has to be hashable. Um, you see here var id self dot id, and it's just a, a a getter as well. So um, strings, integers, and everything like that are all hashable by default anyway. So this is why this property is perfectly fine. So we now want to be able to decode our uh, data that we've received here. And this data is non-nil, right? It means that if there was a problem um, with, th with this data, it would have come here already, okay? But because there wasn't a problem, we now know that we do have data. So we don't need to do any uh, get let data equals data here because it's non-nil. So now we have our items, all right? And we have to say try uh, decoder. I'm going to say decode. And here you can see the type. This is a decodable type. So what we need to be able to pass in now is a type value. Well, generics works with type values here. And this is a concrete type. Right now it's just a T, it's just a type parameter, but we can use it as the placeholder here as that actual type. So we can say we want an array of users and we can just say a T, and here we have to say self to give it the actual type that we want to use. And then we pass the data that we received from this one request, okay? Now we've got these items, we can have a quick check of these, and you can see now we have an, an array of items. This is going to throw, and, and I want to separate the, uh, the throwing to handle it a bit differently, all right? So we're gonna come here and we are gonna wrap this inside of its own do catch block. And here we're going to return failure and then uh, decoding error instead, okay? And the compiler's moaning at us because we haven't returned anything yet. So here we can return uh, success and then with items, okay? So nothing here is is new nothing we haven't really written any any new code right what we're doing is using the the, the code from foundation here and this is not swift ui specific okay and but this is enough that we can use it for every single uh, model type as long as it is codable okay so now we have this we can come to our um our body right and this is just going to be a quick um 
a quick introduction to uh, what we're going to use and we're just going to say list an item in and inside of here we're going to say nothing more than item and then we're going to say uh, email here okay it doesn't know what the items are so we just create states and then uh, private var items and this is going to be an array of uh, user okay but now um, we don't we don't need a preview okay um, and here we're going to say task this is where we're actually going to do the loading and the calling of this one code okay so here we can say that um, let items and URL uh, session shared and once we got that we can say here oh sorry we can say here fetch all and then URL and this is where this URL is going to come in handy all right and we are going to then say URL and uh, we are going to then uh, add this one URL in I'm going to force unwrap this uh, because we know that that string is a properly a correctly formatted string as well and you can say here generic parameter t could not be inferred so here we now have to come to this and say uh, results and we're going to say it's uh, a, a user and then a network error okay and because we um, said that it is uh, an asynchronous we obviously have to then uh, say await now we don't have any errors this is not throwing because we've already caught all of the errors and we've converted every single error to a network error granted we can pass this error on even further all right but that's not really part of this one uh, tutorial so now you can see that we have we've reduced this down now to one line of code if we forget about this url we've reduced it down to one line of code and this one line of code can be used for every single type so my mistake there because i've deleted the, the the preview but now we're, we're back to how how we should have been and let's just uh pop this in uh a navigation oh uh, yeah navigation stack here and we'll just say navigation title is then uh, users here and we'll say uh, navigation display mode is this going to be then in line just to reduce it down a little bit to keep it a little bit cleaner for this and right now we can see some errors here because we haven't used it so we're just going to get rid of them um, so we don't have these uh, errors on the screen or these uh, warnings on the screen and uh, we come back here and we don't have any users right now it's because we haven't uh, set them to be to the item so let's just say self items is equal to items and cannot assign um, oh yeah sorry we need um, we next need uh, my mistake your fault we next need to obviously um, we have a result here instead we next needs to switch over the result because um, we need to extract the items from here so we can now say success items and here we can say self items is equal to items and then we can handle the uh, error in the event that there was an error here as well and we can just print the error out which is our network error enum so once we have done this you can see here that we have all of our our items here now but what i want to show you is that how simple this is you know we have literally made let's move this to the right a little bit we've literally made this fetch one liner right and just for the sake of showing you how how simple this is if we copy this and uh, let's just call this then uh, user list view instead and now we call this i don't know post list view instead and we do the post list view here and now we change this to post and we come up the top and we uh, now define a post and say this is codable identifiable to and it's going to have an id and int and we come over to json placeholder and we then get the posts here and you see we've got a user id id title and body okay so user we've got a user id and a title is a string and then body is then a string here so now we have our post and we now have our post list view here and we can just say i don't know title to list out and then we need to change this to be post as well 
here. And now we change this to post so we don't get a decoding error. And we let this run again. And uh, decode all your session. Cannot find content. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, then we, let's just, yeah, okay, let's come back to here and we'll just say post list view is the main the main view. And when we let this run again, we should have all of our posts, you see? So this this code here it is completely completely reusable. Now the only thing that we really need to care about is uh, the, the URL. That's the one thing. And obviously we, we need to care about uh, this here, right? But you could now extract this out to a view model, right? And so if we created a, a view model here, for example, and just say class uh, view model, let's say place holder uh, view model and in here it's going to be a function say get uh, users and this is then going to be a um, an array of this and let's just return an empty array for the for the time being and then we can say <clears throat> uh, get posts and this needs to be a, a sync here and this also wants to be async and we say post here and now we can uh, copy paste this right we I, I don't want to to add too much um, here but we can say here that private uh, view model is then equal to um, placeholder uh, view model and just instantiate this right and now with inside of uh, this code here we can place uh, users here and then we can just literally uh, switch over this instead so switch result case uh, here items and then return items and then by default sorry by default not that by default we can just return an empty array and we can copy this and place this down here and say posts and this is then going to be a post here. And you can see how easy this is, right? <laughs> see how easy this is. And now we come down to the bottom and we don't have to have any of this uh, junk here anymore. We can just literally have self.items is equal to a weight. And then uh, where is our view model? Copy our view model to be here as well. And uh, say view model uh, gets uh, users. There we go. And then we come to this one here and we say self items equals a weight view model uh, get uh, posts. And when we let it refresh, boom, done. We've now got our, we now have our post list view uh, with it in its simplest form. And we can have a user's list view as well to see that that works. And you've got it literally with a one liner and we come into our view model our view model knows next to nothing about this. The only thing it really knows about is a is a URL, and it's using all of the URLs shared data, and it knows about the post. So all the business logic here, it is uh, really, really, really simple. So we could also reduce this down even further um, by by removing uh, this, and basically by saying return. Um, we need to say success. Sorry, we need to say. Um, yeah, sorry, return results, and we can say get here, right? But this is going to throw, so we can say uh, try, make an optional try, and let's just wrap this inside of um, brackets. And if not, we return um, a, a, an empty array. So we don't even need this switch statement here either, and we get the same thing. So we come back down, and you can see now we, we're managing to to reduce our code down. Remember, this is nothing to do with generics here. This is just to do with normal coding, but how can we use um, the best possible code, uh, how, the best possible code to write as minimal code as possible and as reusable code as possible. So we can come up here and even, um, we can say URL, and uh, this is then gonna be the URL, and we can place this up here and remove that, let's just do this here. 
And now we can come here and say URL appends append path. And inside of this, we can say uh, users, right? And inside of this, we can say uh, posts as well. So it means that we, we're not, our functions now actually don't know about, the functions don't know about the actual, uh, where the server is. They just know this is the endpoint that we want to use. And when it comes down to this, we could then just say endpoint here is then a, a URL. And we can say self URL is equal to endpoint, which means we can remove this now. We can remove that now from here and say uh, private two. And now we obviously need to be able to come here and add that now the URL uh, to, to here instead. Whoops, don't need the equals. But now you can see that we uh, just move this over like that. What did I do wrong there? Okay, there we've got endpoint there instead. We've now extracted this um, URL out even further from our um, from our view model. So we're we're always moving the responsibility up higher and higher and higher. Now, obviously, with Swift, there's with Swift UI. Sorry, there's there's different ways. Um, there's different ways of extracting this out to the highest level, which we would want in Swift UI to remove this view model out to this this highest level level as well. But we're not using a Swift UI. Um, video tutorial here, but we'll get into that in other videos. So really, the view model should live here, right? And all of that data should live here, and we'll pass it through to the uh, to the sub views uh, and so on. Okay, but I just wanted to highlight to you in this video how we can use async and await, how we can use generics, how we can use the results, and how we can use extensions uh, to be able to write this code um, in a completely reusable manner. Now, don't get me wrong, this 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 code here is so reusable we could just extract it to a framework and you could just install it and use it in every single project that you do just as long as you you put network error and a URL session together um, and so you know it, it would just be in every single application you do and when you want to enhance it you could add other functions to it uh, and so on so I hope that this lesson has showed you how to uh, master uh, extensions using URL session generics and async and await and just just the power just the power that we have in Swift to extend types um, and use generics and everything like that with that said uh, don't forget to like subscribe share I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope you've got something out this one video I hope now in the 88th video <laughs> of this one playlist I hope I've really highlighted to you i've inspired you to know that um, generics are the way forward and i'm going to be making even more videos uh, as we move along and you know 100 i'm just going to be flooding generics into this all the time and i'm going to try and show you how to write uh, the least amount of code but to have the most effective code as well and the efficient most efficient code now obviously code always um, the Swift compiler, the Swift language gets better and better and better. So you're always making it more efficient and efficient over time and more effective over time. So it can be that in 12 months time, you look at that code and say, wow, I can make it even shorter now. And if you look at UIKit compared to Swift UI, I mean, it is reduced so much code. Um, with that said, thank you very much for watching. Um, uh, if you've got any questions, feedback, or concerns, then uh, place that in uh, the, the comment section down below. Uh, other than that, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and do all of the other social media things that you can do to this one video. Uh, my name's David Dawn. It's been a great pleasure making this video. I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.